Now, there's been a very interesting development at the Royal Ontario Museum over the last uh, few years. Can you tell me about the Cohen collection? Yeah, most, uh, I guess most people that know me or have been associated with me have observed that most of the places I went, I collected rocks. Um, it's basically been just a, a personal passion that I've had. Um, so over the years, I amassed quite a large collection of not only minerals, but ore sweets. And I used those for a long time, just for my own um, personal pleasure, but also to um, train some of my exploration team and geologists in general. I thought it was, it was always good at the end of the day to uh, have a beer and look at some rocks, which a lot of people did over the years. But as I got older, uh, as particularly when I turned 60, I started to realise that this probably is a valuable teaching asset. And if something was to happen to me, which it eventually will of course, um, what's going to happen to this collection? So I actively started thinking about where could I find a home for it. Um, there was two things that were important to me. One, that it never be broken up, and two, that parts of it or any of it never be sold. So my first choice actually was um, the Data Metallogenetica collection in Australia, which Peter Blasnicka has done a wonderful job of. And which Amira now manages. Yes, and in fact, a few years ago, Peter came up to Thailand. <coughs> uh, he asked if he could um, take pieces off the collection for Admira, which I said was great, please come on up. And so he spent three weeks in my office <coughs> in Thailand and cut slabs off things they didn't have. I was very happy about that. And then, uh, so Peter um, also told me that really they don't have the curation facilities to to look after the volume of material I had. Uh, I then... Could you just give me an indication of how big the volume was at that oh, time? Oh, yeah, it was roughly 22,000 pieces. Um, it, it's enormous. Yeah, it's a lot, of, a lot of rocks, and so it requires... And these range in size from... Oh, um, range in size... Small hand specimens. Small hand specimens to something that, that might be like this. Uh, don't ask me how I got those back, but I did. Um, some interesting pieces actually. So anyway, um, my next move was, um, I think it was the SGA meeting in Dublin when Rich Goldfarb was president. And I approached Rich and I said, uh, you know, I've got all these rocks that I want to unload. Um, would the SEG be interested? And Rich said, yes, of course, but um, you know, how, can, how can we possibly store them and we don't have the facilities at the moment. And so that was unfortunate. Then um, my next move was the Natural History Museum in London, uh, having been a long time friend of Reimer and Richard, and both of them had expressed interest in acquiring it, especially Reimer. And so once again I went over and then we looked in the basement and I saw all these cabinets with dust and specimens and you know they, they didn't have the facility either, and nor did they have really the facility for teaching. Um, so then it sat there for a while and Laurie Curtis, who's a close friend of mine, uh, was visiting Thailand and he came out to stay for a couple of nights and I showed the collection to Laurie and, and he just, he spent at least a full day coming to grips with it and he said to me, uh, you know, what about Canada? And I said, well, yeah, it's, I don't mind as long as we can meet the specs. So uh, he went away and he must have, uh, he had a talk to uh, the people at the University of Toronto, Jack McEwitt and also the ROM. And they all said, uh, yes, this, this could be most interesting, particularly if it can be used for teaching in association with the University of Toronto and, and the ROM, the museum. So Laurie got back to me and said, yeah, I think you know, we've got some traction here. Um, next time you're PDAC, let's talk about it. So uh, I came over, um, Laurie introduced me to some other people at the University of Toronto, um, Jack McEwitt, who was, who was very... That's of the consulting company, Watts, Griffiths yes, and yes, McEwitt? Yes, yes, and it's actually the first time I met Jack, and it was a delight and a pleasure to meet him. He was quite enthusiastic, and also uh, as were the people at the ROM. Uh, so the next move, which came about three months later, uh, the ROM sent um, two people over to actually assess it those being Dr. Kim Tate and Ian Nicholl. Uh, 
they came over, they stayed about... Uh, was that Ian Nicklin? Nicklin, yes, I'm yes. sorry, yeah. So anyway, um, they stayed about, uh, well, it must have been the best part of a, a week to ten days. Literally went through a lot of it, photographed it, um, tried to get a, an idea of, of what it comprised. And they were very enthusiastic. So they went back and clearly wrote an extremely positive report, um, explained to me what their plans were for teaching and curation, so I was very happy. Uh, some months after that, um, Kim had put together the budget that was required that she wanted, and rightly so, she wanted a budget that would include proper curation facilities and um, teaching unit. This came to about four million. Um, she wasn't prepared to get the collection and just get it to the ROM and keep it in boxes, which I greatly appreciate. And so then we, uh, there was a dull period for about two and a half years because times were tough. Um, there wasn't the money available for what she was looking for. We had a gala function at the ROM, uh, raised about 800,000, I think. I came over, I made a presentation, uh, but it wasn't nearly enough for, for what Kim wanted to do. So uh, fast forward a couple of years and then things were starting to pick up a little bit and uh, BMO Nisbets and Yamana stepped up to the plate along with some other groups including the Women's Association of PDAC and a couple of other individuals who were donors and Kim had the budget. So um, when was this? This was about probably 18 months ago. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe two years ago actually. Yep. So the next move was um, for Kim, Ian, and two others to come across um, almost two and a half weeks to pack it up. Um, I employed a number of people to help them and uh, I had to make sure that all the labels were as correct as best I could remember. There was a few pieces that, well, that, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't touched every piece for quite a while. So uh, that took me some time. I put it into plastic trays after I checked each thing. I, I had this stored in, in uh, teak cabinets. Each cabinet had 50 drawers and I had 25 cabinets. So it was reasonably well stored, but I wanted to make sure that everything was labelled properly. So it took me several months. Once I knew that they were going to move it, I spent a lot of time at night, late hours, um, making sure that everything was labelled as best I could remember. And uh, so they came over once, once all the the rocks, I'd gone through all the rocks and then spent two and a half weeks packing it. Totally filled a 20 foot container. Um, Ian had done a fantastic job of working out how many trays I had, the dimensions of the trays, how he would stack them in the container and he got it to within about 95%. So by the time they shut the container doors there was room maybe for another 10 trays. <laughs> and, and how much did it weigh? Did it, did oh it's it? over 10 tonne. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, then we, we thought that the shipping was going to be problematic. I think Kim had budgeted, under my advice, something like $60,000. At the end of the day, I think it was shipped for about fifteen. Then it uh, was shipped to Canada. It had to be in quarantine for about six months. And uh, I think I'll let Kim and Ian explain to you what happened after that. Yeah, we should just put in a brief plug here, shouldn't we? We're actually going to make another video over the next few days. Um, looking at the uh, the Kerwin collection, both here at PDAC and in the museum itself. And we'll make this, this video will be available probably on the SEG website, uh, but also on the Royal Ontario Museum website. 